All right, as I'm getting ready for a ride today, I wanted to show you something that I got in the mail from Basecamp Cycling Helmets. As you know, I'm not a proponent of helmets or an opponent of wearing them. If you want to wear one, great. If you don't want to wear one, great. It's up to you. You will see in many of my videos I don't wear them because I'm on a trail, but at the same time, I just don't feel unsafe by not wearing a helmet. Just a really loud bird there trying to talk over my video. As I'm neither, neither an advocate or an opponent of helmets, I thought I would show what at least I have. If you'll recall from a few years ago, I have these base camp helmets. It, it's, it's, a, it's a pretty lightweight helmet and I think these came out originally to compete with the other big name brand helmet that had the same kind of visor, the magnetic visor which is one of the features that I really liked. When I got this helmet, it, I also got it because I got the extra lenses. At the time, it came with a yellow lens and it came with this cool rainbow mirrored lens that I like. Go check out my video, an old video. They no longer make this helmet. And I don't even know if they make the visors uh, like this anymore because this was a feature that I really liked. But because of that video, Basecamp saw that video and they said that that helped that helmet become an instant success on Amazon. And because of that, they recently contacted me and said, hey, would you be interested in doing another helmet video? And I said, sure, what do I have to do? And they said, just try out our helmet. So in all fairness, they sent me one, but as you know, those of you who watch my channel, I'm gonna be honest, and if I don't like the helmet, I'll tell you I don't like it. If I like it, I'll tell you. If I'm indifferent about it, I'll let you make your decision. So I'm going to unbox it here and check it out and I'm going to compare it to my older helmets. This helmet is updated from what I understand. It's got some Bluetooth features in it. It's got speakers and a microphone in it. By looking at it briefly on the Basecamp website, I noticed that it has some, some really cool features that I might be interested in. And I always like to play music or something when I'm riding, but I don't. One, because YouTube will block the video because I don't have rights to most of the music that I'm listening to. And I don't want to put plugs in my ears. I don't want to put earbuds or earphones or anything like that in my ears. Now, when I'm in a Velomobile, it's even worse because I have all the sound from the Velomobile coming up through the manhole. Those of you who have ridden with me and those of you who ride with other Velonauts, when you're not in a Velomobile, you think, it's really quiet outside the Velomobile, but inside that carbon fiber shell really resonates a lot of sound from the road up through the manhole cover, and it's hard for the person inside to hear normal conversations. Now I can hear cars and things like that, especially with my Garmin and my Varia that I use now that really help me with cars, especially the ones coming up from approaching from the rear. So I can pay attention to those in my mirrors when they're coming up. But I'm gonna open this right now and check it out and see what it looks like. Okay, so as you saw right out of the box, it powered up. Some of the things I've noticed, I've, I've not read any of the instructions yet, but it has lights in the back. It has, it looks to be some sort of maybe a Bluetooth remote for left and right turn signals. And it looks like you can do power and other things on here. Of course, I have to read the book, I haven't read it yet. So it comes with a, a little remote, comes with a little screwdriver and that's so you can get the screws off of the back of the remote to change the battery, which they gave you an extra battery. That's kind of cool. Nice. They've upgraded its USB-C and they give you one and it's got fun colors on it, blue and purple. And that's to charge the helmet. So I'll have to find out where the charging port is on the helmet. The other thing I noticed is to give you a nice case for all of the accessories and the bag. They've upgraded the bag. For, for a really nice accessory. So this is, this is I kept all my other base cam helmets in their bags and this one is pretty nice because what it does is it's, it's 
it looks like it's almost like the Ventasit material and it will breathe. So you can put your helmet in this and hang it up and it can dry out. Okay, so after today's ride, I'm gonna take this thing home and really check it out, review the instructions and see how it works, connect it with my phone, connect it with other things, but I'm not gonna try and experiment on a ride. Um, I have learned that that's not always a good idea. So let's head back home and we'll see how this thing works. Okay, gonna head out this morning on my five mile test loop and I'm gonna test the new base camp helmet. We'll see how it works out. It's, um, it's already paired to my phone and I have my phone running the Garmin Varia app. So I will see if the indicators that the Varia app gives off work through the helmet with no problems. I also have the remote control set up on my Velomobile on the handlebars. I don't have very much room on there, but I put it on there anyway so I could play with the volume and do calling and things like that if it comes necessary. I'm also gonna do a fit test to see how it fits underneath the visor of the Velo, and maybe a little bit later I'll test it under the race cap and see how much room I have in there. Okay, so as you can see in the DF, I still have plenty of room. If I take off the extra Ventasid headrest that I had on there, I still have plenty of room. I can move around in here just fine, no worries. So I've got the rear light on. We'll ride it with that and see what happens there. So that tells me the helmet is on. All right, so now I'm playing my Spotify music and I'm getting a little music, I'm getting it through there. But one of the things that I'm not getting is I'm not getting any, I'm not getting anything from the remote control. So let me check my Bluetooth settings and make sure that I'm connected to the phone. So it says it's connected and it has 80% battery life. So I guess at some point I had hit the remote, the power on the remote to turn it off. So powered that back up and as you can see, So the turn signals work, however, in a Velomobile, I doubt that you're going to be able to see it very much. So, probably won't use that feature. But I can use the features of my phone, and let's see, it seems to have lost Spotify. Oh no, <laughs> it's the end of a song. And the volume controls work just fine. So that's good, I can turn the volume up and down, I can use the signals with my phone connected to a couple of different Bluetooth devices, which is good. All right, so now let's try this. We're gonna put on the, I'm gonna. Hello? Good morning, how are you? I'm very good, okay, so the ELB just called me and it stopped Spotify music and I can talk hands-free. I press the button in the remote to answer the call, and now I can talk to the ELB through the helmet, which to me is a pretty cool feature. So, good morning, ELB. She said, good morning. Well, your voice is on the speaker in my helmet, and we will find out later how much they can be heard, yeah, how loud that is outside. Because I don't have the phone turned up very high, but um, I'm sure I, I can turn it up a little bit more and get more volume out of it. So that's pretty cool. So now what I'm going to tr try is I'm going to try with the remote and I'm going to try and hang up to see if it hangs up from the remote. So I love you. Bye. The sound quality is really good. So yeah, I'll let you know before I leave and um, you can call me out on the road. So, we had a good test right here in the driveway. She said the sound quality is excellent, no problems there. So what we'll do is we'll get out on the road in about 10, 15 minutes and she'll call me again and we'll see what the sound quality is like when I'm actually moving. All right, I'm gonna hang up. I'm gonna try this and see if it hangs up from, from my side and we'll test that out. All right, bye. Okay, and there we go. It hangs up, and my Spotify music kicked right back in. So, sound quality is excellent when you're sitting still. We'll test it in a little while to see 
how it is later out on the road. All right, so I've got the hood in, and I've got a little bit of room in here. It's it, It'll bump around a little bit, so that's not, I guess that's not overly annoying, but I mean, I have a helmet on, and so it's gonna give me less room to move around in here, which is okay, I, I guess. It's gonna bump around a little bit, so it may end up with some marks on the helmet. That's just how it is. You don't you don't have much room inside these velomobiles as it is. Yeah, I've got I've got a little bit of room. It's something I'll have to get used to because it's going to bump me around. Have to get used to that. So I just don't have enough room um, to move around a lot. But I can still turn my head with no problems. And you know if it gets bumped around a little bit, that's that's okay. I can I can deal with that. So now I'll try it with the race cap and see what happens. Okay, so there's the race cap bolted in, and I can move around actually a little bit easier than I can with uh, the open top. Interestingly enough, I seem to have a little bit more room in here, and I can move my helmet and turn my head just fine without hitting the sides. So it still bumps around a little bit inside there, and I've got a little bit of, of knocking back and forth, but that seems to work pretty well. I actually have... It, the way that the curve is on the sides of the of the of the race cap compared to the sun cap I have a little bit more room in there, but typically I ride with the sun cap anyway I don't ride with the race cap very often unless I, I really need to or I think I'm gonna need to because of really bad weather or whatever and then Typically for me if it's really bad weather. I don't ride So that works pretty well. I'm impressed so yeah, I've got some I've got some room in there. I've got plenty of room in there. I can move around in in the, the velo just fine. All right, so let's get out on the road and get it tested. All right, let me stop pedaling for a second, and you can hear the uh, chain. How's that sound? Oh, okay. So it looks like it had decent noise canceling capabilities. So. I'm out on the ride now, the ELB called me back, and she said, at first it was a little choppy, but that also might be because my phone is actually mounted inside the Velo, and it may have something to do with the carbon fiber. But she's telling me that the sound quality is good, and she actually can't hear the freewheel clicking right now, but she can hear it when I pedal. So the ELB was asking where the phone was, if I was holding it outside, because evidently it got really clear that she has no issues hearing me. So that's good. She actually had to turn it down at the very beginning of the call. So it looks like that part of the helmet works pretty well inside of a Velo. And you say the sound quality is good there, ELB? Yeah. All right, and we'll see if, uh, We'll see if later on I can hear any of this on the video from the speakers in the helmet. Okay. Okay, so what she said was, in case it wasn't on the recording, is that it's no, no more breaking up than a normal cell phone call would be, a crackling and popping every once in a while as you're moving around on a mobile phone and it's picking up and changing towers. So. Phone quality is good, audio quality is really good on my side and on her side. So that seems to work pretty good. So I'm gonna continue the ride and say goodbye to the ELB. Okay, good, goodbye ELB. <laughs> I love you. So the remote is mounted here on my handlebars and I can control the volume up and down. I can control the turn signals left and right. And this center button is where I Press to answer the call and press to hang up the call. This is not too obtrusive in my opinion. And if I were on a standard diamond frame bike, I wouldn't have any issues with this being on the handlebar. And it would probably be pretty easy to use because the buttons are soft and they're easy to press. And so you can hear that. So, and now I have my Spotify music back on. I can pause that too by hitting the button in the middle 
it picks up a call and I can pause my music. So that's pretty cool. Pretty cool features with the Bluetooth in conjunction with other things like on, on my phone, other applications on my phone. All right, so I'm gonna finish up this five miles here and see how the rest of it works. It, it's bumping around a little bit, but it's not too bad. I mean, it's to be expected. I mean, I've got, a, I've got a sunroof on. The one thing I did tell you previously is that I really liked about the other base count helmets is that visor that just magnetically clipped on here. This helmet does not have that. So I've got to wear my sunglasses that I have, <clears throat> which is okay. That way you can wear whatever sunglasses you want. You can wear your own personalized stuff. I personally preferred having that visor because then I didn't have to mess with glasses getting in the straps of my helmet or anything like that or, or being too close to my face. The visor stuck out from the from my face on the helmet far enough that it kept it defogged when I was breathing heavily and sweating. That's not a feature that's available on this particular helmet. So we'll just go from there. I use my own sunglasses, not a big deal. All right, let's head out and hit the rest of this loop and we'll test out some other features. You saw me test out the the uh, turn signals, which in a Velomobile really is, is not gonna work because the helmet, the, the turtle deck blocks the helmet. But other than that, I mean, it's comfortable. The adjustment on the back works fine. It's okay, just over five miles on this little test ride, which is my typical test loop. So I'm gonna power everything down. So there goes Spotify. And there goes the Varia. Device disconnected. That works out just like I hoped it would. Has good reception on the phone whether I'm sitting still or whether I'm riding. I guess some of that just depends on your phone's ability for reception. And even though, even when we had good reception, there was still a little popping and crackling. But that's probably from the cell phone network. From the phone and the and Bluetooth connection in the helmet, it seemed like it was just a regular Bluetooth connection. So that was good. So I'm still getting used to the DF as well. <laughs> it's a little bit cramped in here compared to my quest. I'm, I'm used to having lots of room in my quest. That ride, even though I was testing this helmet, that ride felt really good. I was moving along just fine. I got a vent to sit on just the back part of my seat now instead of down on the bottom so my knees aren't hitting the top of the velo. That was a good ride. All right, so let me get the top off, get out of this thing, and we'll finish up this review. Okay, so here's the base camp helmet. This is the SF999, that's what they're calling it. And um, as you saw on the ride, it works pretty well. The Bluetooth features work well. The, uh, the phone reception was pretty good. It was probably just based on the reception of my phone. But the features of the helmet working in conjunction with the phone worked great. The Bluetooth capability worked great with my Spotify music. So I was able to hear my music. I was able to hear a phone call just fine. And my Garmin Varia radar, when it picked up a car coming in from the rear and gave me the warning, I could hear it just fine through the helmet, which is one of the key things for me that I really wanted. Now, the turn signals on the front and the back, for me, is not really a big deal, especially in a Velmobile, but for an upright bicycle, and maybe even on the open trike, I'll have to try it on the open trike when the ELB and I go out and ride sometime, and we'll see if those turn signals work. Me, personally, I don't really like the audio that goes with the turn signals because it's the turn left, beware, turn right, beware. But I just got an email from Basecamp and they said their number one concern is safety. Their second concern is enjoyment and how the helmet works. So safety first. And so that is an indicator to both the cyclist wearing the helmet and others around that you're turning left or right. After 35 seconds, both the turn signal and the audio go off. So it's automatic. And I did test that yesterday at my desk and it does go off when it's supposed to. For me, that's not a feature that I will use very much, I think simply because of the type of bike I ride, but on a normal bike, probably a pretty good feature. It's really kind of cool that it has the turn signals. Also has the adjustment in the back, which I'll show you how that works. It's got a push button that you push in and out. So pulling it out, adjust it instantly, pushing it in engages it again and allows you to tighten it up. It's just like any other bike helmet, putting it on, getting all your beautiful hair out of the way, putting the strap on, comes with a nice, cover for the strap down there and on all that. Now, of course you can adjust it. You can make all of the side adjustments 
to adjust the straps to wherever you want them to be. So if they're close up to your ears, you can move those around very easily. And then you can also make the strap adjustments to make it so the strap is tighter on your chin if you'd like. So that's how that works. Yeah, I, I don't think it's too bad. I was really kind of surprised that I had more room inside the racing cap than I did inside the sun cap. So that's pretty cool. Other than that, I think it'll work in a Velomobile. It should work with no problems on a trike and it'll work just fine on an upright bike. So that's my initial review of the base camp helmet. I'll ride with it a couple more times just to see how I like it and to see how it's going to work. But so far, I mean, I like it. That's all for this time in this little review of this base camp helmet. I hope you liked it. Keep in mind that this is going to be an affiliate link down below. And if you buy one of these helmets through my affiliate link, you can save 5% using the code flaming eyeball. All right, until next time, cheers.